from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Rather warm day for December in this part of the country, 40 degrees as the San Francisco 49ers meet the Green Bay Packers. Good afternoon, everyone. Tim Ryan with Tom Maddy here in Milwaukee. And uh, Tom, these Packers who finished their last two seasons with a victory, hope they can do it again today. They're 3-10. and 10. They'd like to go to 4-10. and 10. The 49ers are 5-8. and eight. You had these... Uh, Packers last week against the Chicago Bears. I had them last two weeks, Tim, and they're a much improved ball club. Barty Smith has had, been having a great year. He's finishing up strong last week against Chicago. He had 86 yards rushing. He has over 500 yards rushing for the season. He's looking to pick up the get over that 600-yard mark. We have another guy on there that's starting his 10th season, 140 games in a row, Mr. Fred Carr right the there. Iron Man. He is an Iron Man. To play that much football, you've got to be a pretty tough ball player. 49ers had their best offensive display, but in a losing cause against Dallas on Monday night. Jim Plunkett, been bothered by ribs all season long, but he looked real loose on Monday night, threw for four touchdowns, better than 200 yards passing, and that match in touchdowns, his best day ever in the National Football League. Another guy who had a big day was on the receiving end. Gene Washington caught five for 130 yards and a touchdown. And for Washington, a man who hasn't seen a whole lot of pass-catching action this year, that was a big night, and I know that uh, that will be a tough combination for the Packers to deal with today. But one thing about Green Bay, they're fourth in the conference in terms of uh, the points given up, just about 15 points a game. They They've sure. got a tough secondary. They do. they got a great secondary. Dick LeBeau, the coach, has done a great job. And here's a flip of the coin right down there right now. All right. As we look at the officials, our referee today is Fred Wyant. The umpire is Tom Hensley. The headlines from Leo Miles. The line judge, Don Orr. The back judge, Jimmy Rosser. And the field judge is Fred Swearing it. The 49ers have won the toss and elected to receive. They were a little bit late arriving on the field. Uh, Packer fans thought maybe they were going to get themselves a default today. <laughs> that didn't happen. They did show up. They're hurting. The 49ers have got some starters out today. Steve Lawson, their starting left guard, will be replaced by John Ayers. They've got some uh, problems in the secondary. Tony Leonard out with a kidney injury suffered Monday night. Eddie Lewis will go there. Stan Black will start for Ralph McGill, who suffered a knee injury. And a tight end offensively, Tom Mitchell, your old teammate from Baltimore days, he's out of action with a knee sprain, and Paul Seal will get the start there. Hackers have had some injury problems, too. Mark Conkar is out of action. Rookie Greg Cook will start at left tackle for him. And defensively, uh, Dave Purifoy out with leg muscle problem and a knee as well. And it'll be Clarence Williams, the veteran, going in his spot. So both these teams have had injury problems all season long. And the pack, of course, still without uh, Lynn Dickey gone for the year uh, with a broken leg uh, suffered in the Rams game. And it's been David Whitehurst going at quarterback since that time. Here is Chester Marco ready to kick off for Green Bay. The Packers will kick off the defend to our left in their home green uniforms. The 49ers to our right in white. We're just about set to go. The 49ers are 5 and 8. The Packers are 3 and 10. Last week they lost to the Bears 21 to 10, while the 49ers are losing to Dallas 42 to 35. A short kickoff taken at about the 13 yard line. It looks like Bobby Sparrow. And uh, he slips and slides out near the 20 yard line, and that's about all. No, it was number 30. Returning it uh, for the San Francisco 49ers. And it'll be first down for the 49ers at their own 20. Jim Plunkett will bring out Wilbur Jackson along with Delvin Williams and the wide receivers Washington and Harrison with Paul Seal starting at tight end. And there is the offensive line. You see John Ayers starting for the injured Lawson at left guard. First down, San Francisco. Wilbur Jackson, the first man straight ahead is met right at the line of scrimmage and swarmed under. He maybe got a half a yard on the play as the middle of that line stacked him up, and there is that line. Butler and Bob Barber at the end, Dave Roller, Clarence Williams starting for the injured day, Pure Ford right tackle. The linebackers are Toner, Carter, and Ironman Fred Carr. Secondary, a tough young secondary, as we mentioned. Willie Buchanan, Mike McCoy in the corner, Steve Luke and Johnny Gray are the safeties. McCoy bothers with a little turf toe but uh, out there in action at the right corner, number 29. Second and nine for the 49ers, as we're just underway here in Milwaukee. High formation, pitch shot, Delvin Williams. Williams is stopped by the middle linebacker. That is Jim Carter, number 50, the first man to hit him. Here's a great shot of the defense in pursuit coming across. Plunkett gets a snap, pitches it out. You can see the roller coming right along the line of scrimmage. Carter coming up, filling the middle of the hole right there. That's the job of the middle linebacker, Tim. He did a great pursuit job, 
He had the speed, the lateral movement, filled the hole good. For you Dave Williams fan, the rookie from Colorado was number 30. He'll return that opening kickoff. We're a little late identifying him. Our apologies to Dave and his family. It is third and nine, bucket to throw. And it's intercepted. It is Willie Buchanan, number 28, getting back to the 32-yard line before he stopped by Wilbur Jackson. And that ball was thrown right to him. I mean to tell you, there's got to be a mistake on that pass pattern or punk. It just laid it up like a lame duck here. He sets up. He's got the protection. A little bit of pressure on him. The ball is just thrown out. Buchanan is there waiting for it to go in. Look how he looks that ball right into his hands. There's a happy defensive secondary. They had that zone flooded. The nearest man was Paul Seal, number 85, but the ball was well over his head and nowhere near the deep receiver. So Buchanan had one handed right to him. It's first down, Green Bay. An early turnover by San Francisco. Willard Harrell, number 40, is stopped behind the line and dropped for a loss of about a uh, yard on the play. David Whitehurst is the quarterback with Willard Harrell, number 40, and Barty Smith, number 33, the running backs. The wide receivers are Steve Odom, 84, and Ollie Smith, 89, with Rich McGeorge, the tight end. Across the front, Greg Cook starting for the injured Mark Conkar tackle, Dennis Havig, Larry McCarron, Mel Jackson, and Dick Hines. It is second, and we call it a loss of two, second and 12. And they got a double tight end situation in here. Two tight ends and on one side here. Burt asks in number 88, and he's in the pattern. A short pass to Smith coming out of the backfield. Bruce Healy misses him. Gets inside the 20 near the 15 yard line. That was a great play. And taking another look at it, this is where Whitehurst fakes in. You can see Barty Smith hold up right here. He just waits for the halfback to clear the area out. Whitehurst just lays him out, and it's a one on one on the linebacker right here. And Barty's got the strength and the speed to get to the outside, and Elia misses him right there. Barty, big back. He's 6'4", about 240. He's an hard to 18-yard gain, Tom, and the 49ers have themselves in a hole here as Green Bay threatening following the interception by Buchanan. First down at the 17-yard line. Smith behind left guard Dennis Havig and center Larry McCarron. Cleveland Elam, number 72, the first man to get him, but he picked up three, maybe four on the play. One of the real good front fours in football, 53 Tommy Hart, 86 Cedric Hardman at the ends. Webb and Cleveland Elam are the tackles. The linebackers, Skip Vanderbunt, Bruce Elia, and Willie Harper playing in the injured uh, Dave Washington spot. The secondary is hurting. Eddie Lewis starting for Tony Leonard, Stan Black, Bruce Taylor, and Mel Phillips. Taylor on the far corner, the right corner, and uh, Black starting for the injured Ralph McGill. Second and six. Busted play, Whiters pitches to Harrell. Harrell is knocked out of bounds by Stan Black, number 26. And I said busted play. It might have been the option that we have seen Whiters run before. And that's uh, what it looked like, because Whiters has run this before. Uh, you know, we don't see this in the pros very often. This looks like my quarterback days at Ohio State. You're running down the line. You got the option, a linebacker and a halfbacker up there. Harrell turns the corner. He's got the speed. And he gets the first out. Oh, he's not he's a little short of the first It'll start. be third and about two and a half to go. I got to figure that Smith should have come a little tighter, though, for a fake right. on that handout. Yeah, I think so, too. So we'll say we were a half right going. <laughs> it was a half busted play. A half busted. Third down, Whitehurst to throw. Intended for Smith, nicely broken up by Vanderbilt, number 52, the left linebacker, getting a hand in front of Smith. And that'll bring up fourth down so the Packers unable to come up with a major score following the turnover watch a great defensive play here by the linebacker Skip Vanderbilt he comes right in front as as Whitehurst delivers the ball here you'll see the hand come right in with no pass interference a little blurry but good coverage very good coverage it'll be by our cameraman too much that. That. well done it'll be our field goal try from the 17-yard uh, line Beverly holding for Chester Marco Marco has it up and nailed, and the Green Bay Packers jump into the lead here early in the first quarter with 11-15 remaining. The Green Bay Packers on a Chester Marco field goal lead the 49ers 3 to nothing.
This Christmas card was sent to you by the people at Miller High Life. Merry Christmas. Introducing the Ford in your future. The new Ford Fairmont Wagon. A new wagon designed for today and the years ahead. The Fairmont Wagon has excellent mileage ratings, but while it is trim and lean outside, Fairmont has almost 90% of the passenger space of most large wagons, and with a seat down can swallow up all this cargo. Yet for all this, the new Fairmont Wagon, as shown, is actually sticker price less than this little VW Rabbit. Test drive Fairmont. The newest better idea from the Wagon Master. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers and the National Football League is prohibited. Now Chester Marco gets to kick the ball again. Third time he's done so here early in this football game. His second kickoff and the field goal that has the pack in front three to nothing. Paul Hofer, number 36 for the 49ers, gets it out to the 25-yard line. He's met there by Steve Luke and Bert Askson. It'll be first down 49ers once again, this time starting from their own 25-yard line. Chester Mark Gold field goal has the Green Bay Packers on top, three to nothing. Tim Ryan and Tom Matty here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. 49ers last year were 8-6. The Packers finished at 5 and 9 last year. Neither team will match those records, regardless of what happens here today. Play action. Bunkin on first down. A loose roller. Open, wide open as Harrison drops the ball. Kenny Harrison, number 83, wide open and could not hold on. Second down. I'll tell you, here's a here's great fake. Not only that, but Bunkin does a great job avoiding. Roller right there. Roller slips. Plunkett hasn't got time to set up. He throws it a little behind Harrison. But whenever a receiver gets his hands on the ball, Tim, you know, you're getting paid to catch it. Catch it. No doubt he should have had that one. Second down. Wide left comes Gene Washington, number 18. I formation. Williams and Jackson, the running backs. Bill Williams comes into the game with 885 yards rushing. Plunkett slips and he's sacked. Plunkett is sacked by Dave Roller, and the colorful one <laughs> bounces up there and shakes a fist to his fans in the end zone. But uh, David uh, shouldn't be hollering too much because Plunkett slipped here more than uh, David catching up with him. <laughs> oh, boy. Nonetheless, he was in there and got the job done, a seven-yard loss. It'll be third down, 17 to go for the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. Defensive backs in for Green Bay in this passing situation. Bob Barber is offside as Williams gets the call. Williams gets out over the 25 to the 27 yard line. He's hit there by Steve Luke, number 46, but uh, they're well short of the first down, even with the penalty. And there is our uh, crew hard at work in the mobile unit. Those are the guys that uh, really do the job. We just sit here and enjoy the game, and they're all watching it from several monitors, you, as you can see, and our director, Jim Silman, producer Bob Rowe, associate producer Joan Vitrano, all of our fine technical crew getting it on for you. And we'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas from us up here and down in the truck. Right. All side, number 70, defense. Third down. Bob Barber is offside. You heard referee Fred Wyant, number 75, and that's what it looks like to our people in the truck. Third and... 12 to go on that five-yard penalty. In the middle open is Washington, and Washington has a first down for San Francisco at the 47-yard line. Here's Plunkett setting up right now. He's dropping back. You can see the rusher roller taking the outside charge, coming in, good pass protection. Plunkett has all the time. Here's our feature man at the beginning of the program right here, Mr. Washington. He saw what he's going to get hit there. He ducked his head, but held on to that football. Great reception. Washington's 27th catch of the season. He averaged 20.8 yards per pass coming in. Not a whole lot of pass catches for a receiver like Washington this year. It's dumped out to Delvin Williams. Williams slips, but he has the first down yardage into Green Bay territory at the 43-yard line. Tom Toner, number 59, put the tackle on him. 
You know, we have a couple big games around the league at halftime. Chicago and the Giants are tied three to three. And we also have another game in Houston, Cincinnati, and Cincinnati is getting beat by Houston 13 to six. Uh, Pastorini hit a 17 yard pass to White Shoes, Billy Johnson. All right, Cincinnati has to win that game. If they win it, they're in the playoffs. It's the champions of the Central Division in the AFC. The Bears have to win. They want to get in. They've got to beat those Giants today as Minnesota won last night. The Bears must win today. If they do, they'll be in. And the Giants, a tough defensive team playing in what we understand are very bad weather conditions in New York today. Rain and sleet, 30 degree temperatures. First down for the 49ers as they're on the move. Wide right goes Washington. Wide left comes Kenny Harrison. Williams and Jackson, they'll come out on that eye and most times will shift to the split back. Williams. Number 24 and Jim Carter, number 50, along with Steve Luke, that top safety comes up and gets in on everything. He's got 87 tackles coming into the game, Steve Luke, the third year man from Ohio State. Would that, would, would they name that school again? <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have underlined that. Ohio, Ohio State, State, Tom Maddy's old alma mater. By the way, you know, in that game up there with the Giants, uh, Walter Payton was going for that 2,000 yard mark. Right, to, right now, and he has seven carries for minus five yards. Isn't so that, that giant incredible? defense must be doing something right. Minus five yards for Walter Payton. He's only carried seven times. <laughs> Pass out for Jackson on the screen. Gets one good block, but Luke is there again. And Luke stops him short of the first down. It'll bring up a third down. He gained maybe four on the play. And I think Jackson got a real shoulder injury on that because Luke came up and really stuck him. Boy, he's a hitter. Luke and Gray, we've talked about them a lot on the telecast we've had Green Bay because they get in on the action. Johnny Gray, 106 solo tackles coming into the game. And Luke, as we said, with 87. They just like to get where the ball is. So Jackson, the injured 49er. They've had uh, their injury problems. As we mentioned at the beginning of our telecast, Ralph McGill, Tom Mitchell, Dave Washington, Kaz Banaszek, their number one pick, Elmo Boyd, and Steve Lawson all out with injuries. We'll be back in just a moment. Green Bay leads it three to nothing. How much should you expect from a great camera? Polaroid's SX-70 lets you shoot automatically, very close, or very far away. In lots of light, or hardly any. Shoot every second and a half. And have beautiful pictures in minutes. No other camera in the world does it all. The SX-70 Alpha One. To make it in this business, you gotta stay one step ahead of everybody else. So I've got something nobody else has. Sunoco's penny pinching pump. It could save you money on quality gas. Like my 190, the gas that's made to sell below my regular. And most cars that run on regular can use it. Hey, if I don't want you to pass me by, I gotta give you a price you can't pass up. Sunoco's penny pinching pump can fill up your tank for less. That's my way of being very friendly. All right, the San Francisco 49ers have Bobby Farrell in replacing Wilbur Jackson, who left after a real good pop from Steve Luke. It is third and four. 49ers driving inside the 40 yard line of Green Bay. Hack leads it three to nothing. We've got 8.07 remaining here, first period. Delvin Williams tripped over one of his blockers, falls what appears to be short of the first down. Jim Carter, number 50, the linebacker, finished him off, and we'll wait and see where they mark it. It does appear to be about a yard short. We'll call it a gain of two and a probable fourth down coming up. And I think they're going to go for it. At the end of the season, nothing to lose. Let's go for the first down. Jim Obradovich comes in, number 89, replacing Washington to give them a double tight end situation with Paul Seal. Remember, Tom Mitchell, the normally starting tight end, is out with an injured knee. Williams and Farrell are the running backs. Farrell is the lead back, number 38. Now they move into the split backs. It is Farrell going to the weak side and... Looks like he has the first down. Good play by the 49ers. Had everybody stacked up on the left and went to the right. You can see the back leading. He takes a jab step the other way to get that middle linebacker going the other way. He trips there, but he still does get the first down. Good running. 
We got some updates on some scores here. Here's St. Louis. Can you believe this? Tampa Bay is beating them 14 to 7. How about that? Jeez. I can believe that if you just look at the last two games. Yeah. St. Louis seems to be really down mentally. And of course, Tampa Bay's got to be up. They finally know what a win feels like. <laughs> First down, San Francisco. High formation, Williams and Farrell. Play action. Lots of time. Intended for Seal off his hand. Nearly intercepted by Gray, but it is incomplete. Paul Seal got a hand on it. The pass a little high. It'll be second down, San Francisco. I'll tell you, that defensive secondary for Green Bay really works as a unit. They're really trying back there. They like to hit the people. We got another score, too. Atlanta, New Orleans. Atlanta's beating New Orleans 14 to 7. First quarter. Jim Plunkett has thrown six passes already, Tom. He's three for six and 39 yards. It is second and ten. The 49ers trying to keep this drive going. Farrell still in for Wilbur Jackson. Draw play. Farrell. Bobby Farrell breaks through two tacklers. Works his way into the 25-yard line before Johnny Gray, number 24, finally stops him. Here's Harold filling in for Jackson right now. It's just a good old short draw. Let the guys come by. Keeps his balance there. It's a little muddy out there, and it's good hard running by Farrell here. He keeps his legs moving, but that secondary again comes up and makes the tackle. Got to have some people on the line making the tackle. Third and four. Farrell, a second-year man from UCLA, played in the World Football League, picked up as a free agent a year ago. 24 years of age. Delvin Williams behind Farrell's block. Good block, too. And he's pulled down by Butler, number 77, the rookie defensive end. Got a hold of his jersey, but he has a first down. And the 49ers keep it going. They're at the 20-yard line of Green Bay now. You know, Plunkett's doing a good job right here. He's mixing his plays. He's passing. Watch the blocking coming along here. Farrell is a good one. Williams is picking his blocks, following him. You could... You know, when you're running back, you have to use that speed only once you get past that line of scrimmage. You've got to follow those blockers, then you can put it on. And he followed his blocking very well that time. Another Niner first down at the 20. Plunkett will throw. He's got Washington open. He's covered by Buchanan and brought down after a gain of maybe eight on the play. Sideliner to Gene Washington, and he just kind of flared out of there, and they got the ball to him before he made the turn. You know, Tim, talking, about Gene, talking about Gene Washington... Here's, here's the pass again to him. Plunkett again slips. You can see him throwing off his back foot. It's really hard, tough footing out there. But this guy is not only a great receiver, but he's one of the real class guys in the National Football League. Sure we had is. a chance to talk with him this morning before coming to the game. And, and he's a real competitor. He's out here to win. This is our last game. Nothing right on it, but he wants it. Williams and Farrell still a running back. Wilbur Jackson injured on this series. Farrell hit by Johnny Gray. Battling, trying to get first down, and let's see where they mark it. Good work by Farrell, who shows a lot of power. He's six feet, 219 pounds. Johnny Gray had a hold on him, but Gray's only 5'11", 185, and it may be that uh, he wasn't able to stop him from the first down. Are they going to measure? No, it'll be just short. Third, and let's call it about six inches. Bring in the other tight end, probably, in this situation. Short yardage, just get that first down. Bradovich and Seal both be in there. Jim Bradovich, number 89. Plunkett going for it. And he's got it. It's signaled on the sidelines. First down, San Francisco. And they've been grinding it out here, Tom. It's they been an sure impressive have. drive. Here you can hear him calling the signals right there. And when you have this kind of a short yardage situation, the best thing is to do not to hand that thing off. Just fall forward. All you need is about three inches to get the first down, and he got it for him. Gene Barrett, number 77, uh, was the man who led the charge for him uh, on the blocking assignment. 50-year man from Tulsa. It is first down for the San Francisco 49ers, and they're at the nine-yard line, threatening here as they trail 3-0. Time moving along in the first period, 3.54 to play. Receivers covered. Plunkett runs into his own man trying to scramble. He ran into Keith Bonhorst, and that gave Bob Barber, number 70, the chance to put the tackle on him. It was great defensive coverage by the Green Bay Packers there. He got maybe a yard with his scramble. 
And we have a Packer down and the trainers coming on the field. Looks like a hand or wrist injury. And it is Bob Barber who made the tackle on Big Jim Plunkett. So we have 3.31 remaining here in the first period. The Packers scored off a turnover, a field goal by Chester Markle, and they lead 3 to nothing. Good. Now we can go to bed. Well, uh, wait a minute. I want to give you a gift while we're alone. Uh, it's uh, something just for you. A washer and dryer. How can I be serious? Okay. Now, close your eyes. Merry Christmas. Give her a diamond. It's forever. It's no joke when a meeting runs late and you've got to catch a plane. And if Hertz, the superstar in rent a car, hadn't invented express check-in, you just might be waiting in line at some rent a car counter while your plane is taking off. It takes a superstar to come up with time-saving ideas like express check-in. Next trip, you might need it too. So rent a Ford or other fine car from Hertz. The superstar in rent a car. That's right. It's group encounters of the funniest kind when Sizzlick attempts to restore harmony to the community center. This community center is full of crazy people. Wednesday night, right after Good Times. Well, a big Christmas weekend coming up for you here on CBS. A sports spectacular Saturday, NBA basketball, regional action on Sunday in the Fiesta Bowl. That's Christmas Day. And then on Monday, the NFL playoff doubleheader. Games coming to you from Dallas and Los Angeles. First down. Intended for Washington, touchdown! Gene Washington just went straight ahead and beat Mike McCoy. A perfect throw from Jim Plunkett. And the 49ers go in front. I'll tell you, on the ground level action camera right here, you can see what exactly happened. Plunkett just drops straight back, back pedals straight, just lays it right to the corner, lets Washington beat his man. Watch Gene look that ball into his hands, tucks it in, and gives a little drop behind the back. So it is six to three, and Ray Wershing is in to attempt the point after. He's got it. And the San Francisco 49ers with a very impressive drive, grinding it out, using up the clock, and we now have just 3.07 remaining. 16 plays, 75 yards, and the 49ers lead it 7 to 3. Raggedy Ann, the storybook friend of generations of children. Now she stars with Raggedy Andy in a delightful new family movie from Bob's Merrill, the publishing people of ITT. ITT's Raggedy Ann and Andy, a storybook brought to life at some very lucky local theater. He's a cop and she's a girl who's been around. But it looks like someone doesn't want him to make it. The word is out to stop them. The odds are 100 to 1 they won't get through, but there's no way they're going to give up. Clint Eastwood, The Gauntlet, rated R. Opening this week everywhere. Seventy-five yards and 16 plays, and the key statistic there, eight minutes used up on the clock as the 49ers ground it out and lead it seven to three. Wershing slipped on his kickoff and it's short. Taken at the 26 yard line by Steve Wagner and he gets out to about the 34 yard line. So they have a good start there for the Green Bay Packers. He's stopped by Johnny Miller number 66. Well on the CBS Sports Spectacular we've got some real entertainment for you with World Professional Skateboard Speed Championships that's next Saturday at 430 Eastern Time and they will uh, provide some interesting competition in the giant slalom the standing board and the skate car categories and that should be a real thrilling show along with the European Figure Skating Championship next Saturday 430 Eastern Time. Willard Harrell finds oh. a hole and picks up about six yards on the play, squeezing through behind the blocking of Dennis Havig and the rookie Gray Cook, number 68. I'll tell you, he knifed right through there. Very nice. 
Now Phillips can, made the tackle. You can see the handoff by Whitehurst right here as Harold comes straight across, straight on blocking. Barty Smith leading up in the hole. He picks it. He sees it to the outside. It's good hard running. That's good pickup. That's a good first down. Greg Cook, number 68, you saw in the middle of that blocking pattern. The rookie from Arkansas, their second round pick, getting a start ahead of Mark Conkar, who's just a second year man from Colorado out with a knee injury. And that is Harold down. I'll tell you one thing, they're having their injuries. Bob Barber is out for the game now. He's got a broken wrist, it looks like, and he'll be out of the game for the rest. He's out for the season now. I'd though, say God. he's gone for the year. <laughs> right, Tommy. <laughs> Ezra Johnson, number 78, will play for Barber. Now, the interesting thing here is that Nate Simpson, who would normally be in here to replace Harrell, is bothered with an ankle injury. They don't want to use him today if they can avoid it. So they're bringing in number 34, another rookie, as uh, Simpson is. Turdell Middleton from Memphis State, their third-round choice, 6 feet, 195-pounder. 22 years of age, and Middleton got some action earlier in the season, but has not played much the last several games. Simpson seemed to move ahead of him in the rookie running back department. Plot formation right, Barty Smith straight ahead on second and four. Got a couple. Cleveland Elam, the right defensive tackle, number 72, put the stop on him. You know, three weeks ago, the, uh, the Packers went to what they call the uh, slot formations where they're putting both the backs in between the guards and the tackle, which is a little cl closer to the uh, to the quarterback. And they're using a lot of the slants and a lot of the dives like the old college T formation. And it's been effective for them. These guys have had a better running game. They've averaged over 150 yards a game rushing in the last couple weeks, so they've been doing a pretty good job with it. Burt asks him is in as the second tight end here in third and short. We'll call it about a yard and a half. Trying to get outside is Middleton, slipping and crawling, trying to get first down. Did he get it? It's going to be close. Well, he marked the ball right where Turdell put it, put it down, which was nice <laughs> for Turdell and the backers. And I think that's going to give him a first down. I think he did a little with the crawling. <laughs> he could see exactly where that marker was because he was right in front of it. And he got the first down. Good work, Turdell. So the Packers come out of their own zone to the 45-yard line. San Francisco leads it 7 to 3 on a plunket to Gene Washington 9 yard touchdown pass. After Chester Markle had opened the scoring for Green Bay. Tim Ryan and Tom Maddy here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Normally we would be shivering up here this time of year. 18th of December but it's really quite mild. 40 degrees and only going as low as 35 this afternoon. Whitehurst on first down. Screen pass. Barty Smith. Blockers in front of him. Hit by Skip Vanderbunt all the way inside the 35-yard line. A San Francisco first down at the 34. I tell you, this is a great call. You can see Whitehurst setting up. You can see the defensive front four coming straight through. Good pass. Barty Smith picks it up, follows his blocking again. Good blocking. Makes a cut to the outside right there. Puts his head down and runs over Vanderbunt. 21-yard gain for Barty Smith. All right, watch Hartman right here. Look at this. Gets a good cut block right there. That's the key, because he can get his hands up to break up that pass on the screen. Greg Cook doing the job on him. Number 68, the rookie, playing for the injured Mark Conkar. First down pass, middle wide open. Hit at the 10, the ball fumbled, but out of bounds. So the pack will have another first down inside the 10-yard line of the San Francisco 49ers. All right. Stan Black on the coverage along with Eddie Lewis, the cornerback number 22. Vanderbunt was a guy who pushed him out. <laughs> Mr. Whitehurst just laid that ball up perfect, and it was a spiral. Look at that. <laughs> Got to hold on to it, though, babes. A 26-yard gain for another Packer first down, and both these quarterbacks going to the air and going successfully. Willard Harrell's injury report, a sprained right knee, and it's uh, doubtful whether he'll be back. Eric Torkelson, number 26, is now in with Barty Smith and running back. Seven seconds remaining in the quarter, a first down for the pack. The eight-yard line of San Francisco. Play action. Whitehurst, wide open, he breaks the court, touchdown! Good play by the Packers. They brought McGeorge over from the right side. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage against Bruce Gilea. And the George was wide open. I tell you, the thing that they did is they had the flow action all to the right. Everybody went to the right, and the George comes straight across. He sets up, 
Looks like he's gonna block right here. He fires in, he sneaks out. You can watch number 81 on the bottom of your screen. You'll see him come right there, wide open. A great call. Chester Marco will attempt the point after. David Beverly will hold. And it's good. No, it hits the post. Hits the post. And comes bouncing back out. I thought from his trajectory, he had that thing well inside, but it hit the post, and uh, that point could turn out to be interesting, the way these teams are marching up and down the field. And so the Green Bay Packers with a second left on the clock here in the first period get an eight-yard touchdown pass, Whiters to Rich McGeorge, and they go in front by a score of nine to seven. You know, if we get a chance to see that play again, you'll see why McGeorge had the opportunity to be wide open, you say, well, how could he be? Well, what happens is when he blocks down to the inside, that releases that defensive back, and he is picked up by the middle linebacker. So he looks like he's cracking down there on a block, and he just slid across underneath everybody and came wide open on the play, Tim. That's a good call. They practice that. That's your short yardage situation. Justin Marco was 10 out of 12 in points after coming into the game. He's now 10 out of 13. For Rich McGeorge, his 15 catch of the season and his first touchdown. They went 65 yards in six plays as David Whitehurst uh, moved him very effectively. They used up 306 and they lead it by 29 to 7. Chester Marco will kick it off for Green Bay. He's been a busy man so far in this first period. This is uh, a good kickoff taken by Hofer at the five yard line number 36. Hofer good return over the 30 to about the 33 and stopped by number 31 the rookie Jim Culbreth and that will finish up this first period at County Stadium in Milwaukee and we've got a wide open football game underway Green Bay leads it 9 to 7 all over America women are turning to men who use Vitalis we Easterners don't turn for just anybody Heads are turning to Vitalis. When a Midwestern girl turns, she means it. Heads are turning down south. A nice girl would never turn. Women are turning to men with shorter hair. That's why more men are turning to Vitalis with that clean together younger look. In California, we just turn. Heads are turning. <laughs> Ford introduces the new Futura. <laughs> A dramatic combination of styling and technology from 1978 and beyond. Futura. Its striking design is the result of computer modeling and extensive aerodynamic testing. Its excellent fuel economy results in part from the use of high-strength, low-alloy metals in Futura's construction. And Futura's ride is the result of a newly created advanced front suspension system. Futura. In a world where cars are looking more and more alike, it represents a change. A dramatic combination of styling and technology from 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Ford dealer for a personal test drive. Well, coming up on CBS Sunday Day, uh, Sunday uh, Christmas Day, December 25th, NBA basketball with the Buffalo Braves and the Cleveland Cavaliers. 12.30 Eastern time. Remember, the Fiesta Bowl will follow that. We'll Tom be there. And Tom and Lindsey Nelson now be down in County, Arizona. Big day, Christmas Day on CBS. Delvin Williams. About a nine-yard gain straight ahead. Johnny Gray, the safety, had to make the tackle. And Woody Peoples and Keith Bonhorst really opened a hole for him. He's got to be a hurdler in college. Watch this. Dell Williams is going for that 1,000-yard mark today. He needs a little over 100 yards. There he goes, takes a step right over top, and he gets stuck right here. Good yeah. hole and uh, good jumping by Delvin Williams. That was over Randy Cross, his center, number 51. Second and about a yard and a half. For the 49ers, Wilbur Jackson is back in there, gets the first down yardage. Jackson went out early in the period with an injury, but uh, after that tough shot by Steve Luke, but he's apparently okay, because he's running hard again. Roller and Jim Carter made the tackle. First down, 49ers at their own 45-yard line. Williams got 20 yards right now, and he needed 115 to get to the 1,000-yard mark, which will be two years in a row for him. 
Ofer's 28-yard kickoff return gave San Francisco good field position to start this drive. We are just underway in the second period. Tim Ryan and Tom Maddy at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Williams again slips this time as he's trying to make the turn. And Jim Carter, number 50, buries them there after a gain of maybe a yard on the play. You can see it's a little greasy, particularly <laughs> in the center of that field, Tom. Yeah, this is this is my kind of field. <laughs> you were it a good mutter, huh? I was a good mutter. It brought everybody down to my speed, so you're slow. <laughs> Second and nine for Delvin Williams. Be interesting to see if uh, if they give him the ball uh, an extra amount today to try and get him that thousand. Bill Thomas said emphatically before the game, the general manager of the 49ers, we're playing this game to win. We're using all the able bodies we got to win. Look at the throw for Seal. Has he got it? Yes, yes sir. he has. Good catch by Paul Seal. Number 85, the former New Orleans Saint, has a first down at the 40-yard line of Green Bay. You know, here, here's, a, here's a play again with Plunkett setting up. It's a quick dive fake right there. Plunkett sets up. It's good defensive coverage right here. The back is right there. Steve he, Luke. He lays the ball right low. Seal tucks it away, looks the ball in, catches the ball, gets a first down. Good call. Plunkett had pressure from number 77, the rookie from Kansas, Mike Butler. It is first down, 49ers. Both these teams are moving the ball at will, which is providing some entertainment between a 3-10 and 5-8 and and <laughs> pair of teams here this afternoon, our final CBS regular season telecast. Bucket under pressure to Jackson. What a good catch. He juggled it, trying to see where uh, the tacklers were and managed to get a hold of that ball as uh, Plunkett came to him in desperation as a safety valve man. It'll be second and six after a gain of four. Dave Roller and Tom Toner. 74 and 59 on the tackle. Looked like he was had an individual pattern going to Kenny Harrison on the outside up there. And the defensive back came up and paid a bump and run situation where Plunkett just couldn't lay the ball out to him, so he had to almost eat it and he dumped it off to the halfback, which is good. Ball at the 36 yard line of Green Bay as the 49ers continue to march. Wide right is Washington, wide left is Harrison. Out of the eye, Delvin Williams, and a good defensive play by Butler, number 77 getting in there underneath to get an arm on him and trip him up. And then he's dropped by Toner and Carter. A little help from Johnny Gray. Gray and Luke will come up on every play. They want to get a piece of that action. Boy, I really like those two safety men. There's my uh, my brother right there, Mr. Bill Curry, the offensive line coach for the Green Bay Packers, one of my real friends. Play with the Colts, play with the Green Bay, played out in L.A., played down in Houston. He's been all over, and he's a line coach here at Green Bay. Third down after a gain of about a yard. It's third and five. Plunkett under pressure. Still gets it away. Complete to Jackson. What a play. Oh, by Plunkett. First down inside the 15-yard line. Plunkett had two tacklers all over him and somehow managed to just push that ball out to Jackson. They got great defensive pressure right here by the rush. You can see Plunkett moving up inside, and he just dumps that ball off. He is really... Those root ribs can't be hurting him too bad if he got a shot like that and he gets a first down. Keeps that drive moving. They had a good rush from Ezra Johnson and Mike Butler and Dave Roller. Dude. And uh, Plunkett had to make a real fine play and a good catch by Wilbur Jackson. First down. 21 yard pickup on that one. They're at the 15 yard line of Green Bay. Packers lead it nine to seven. Williams, the ball stripped but he covers it. That was Mike Butler. Breaking in there, number 77, stripping the ball from Williams, and Delvin uh, very alertly and fortunately got a good bounce. He was able to cover the ball. You know, speaking of Butler, he's a rookie. He's 6'5", 265, and he has 4'7 speed in F40. They've got, a, they've got a pretty nice front four, a young front four up there. Another young rookie that's not in there right now is Ezra Johnson. He's 6'4", 240, can run a 40 and 4'5". You know, it's embarrassing when these big guys can bring you down from behind. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. There are a couple of good athletes. Johnson is in there now, Tom, for the injured Bob Barber. He's out with that wrist for the game. So we'll watch both those rookies. Second and 19, the ball back in the 22. Good protection this time. Deep for Washington. Out of the end zone. Washington out of the end zone by about a half a stride. And he's there asking the official who was right on top of the play. Johnny Gray on the coverage, and Gene said, was I really? <laughs> what a super pass, though, right on the money. And Mr. Washington made a great great catch on it. He does a down and in pattern. It's just a down takeoff. You can see the individual coverage. It's an in and out situation. You can see Gene looking back at the ball. Defensive back coming in.
And you can see where his feet hit. The oh, one boy. foot is out. One foot was just out. And I mean just out. Great camera coverage, gentlemen. I like that kind of. It is third and 19. And Plunkett throwing that ball so well again today, except for that very first pass, which was an interception. It may have been a broken pattern for all we know. Williams out of the backfield. Williams has hit at the 12-yard line. It'll bring up a fourth down as he gained about 10 yards on the play, and it'll leave them fourth and about eight to go, maybe nine. There's that coach, Mr. Meyer. Ken Meyer. Well, I guess there's still speculation about whether Ken will be back next year, uh, his first year coaching after the Monty Clark situation out there, and his team currently five and eight. And Joe Thomas, all he will say so far is that the entire situation will be assessed once the season is over. And I think that means a change in personnel. <laughs> Wershing falls and misses on the field goal try. Ray Wershing's field goal try from the 19-yard line is wide as he lost his balance approaching the ball. And you can see right here how he slips right as he hits the ball right there. His foot slides out from under him, and it throws it off to the right, and it's wide to the right. Well, the 49ers have a real good drive going, but it winds up with Zip, and Green Bay continues to lead 9 to 7, 8.47 remaining in the half. From blazing heat to paralyzing cold, season after season, the J.C. Penney battery has more power to start your car more dependably than any other car battery you can buy. And it never needs water. In fact, it's so dependable, it's warranted for as long as you own your car. If it ever fails to hold a charge, return it. We'll replace it, free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. Up here, the wind can turn an entire ski slope into one big snowdrift. But you're going to take the mountain away from the storm and give it back to the skiers. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you got the time, if you got the time, we got the beer. Miller beer. Well, if you like Tom Maddie, you're going to get to hear him again, whether you like it or not, <laughs> on the Fiesta Bowl, Penn State, Arizona State. That's Christmas Day at 3 o'clock Eastern time following the NBA basketball game. More bowl action coming up. The Sun Bowl, Saturday, December 31st. Stanford and LSU, two exciting teams. Saturday, December 31. And then the biggie, the Cotton Bowl, unbeaten Texas, ranked number one against Notre Dame. That's Monday, January 2nd. The Cotton Bowl. That's Great your old alma action. mater, isn't yes, it? Yes, I'll be cheering for the Fighting Irish. <laughs> I have to admit it. First down, Green Bay. They lead it 9-7 to seven on a missed Ray Worshing field goal from the 29-yard line. Turdell Middleton, good running on that slippery turf. A gain of about seven. I'll tell you, he put a great move on there. Bruce Elias skipped Vanderbunt, 55 and 52. The linebackers made the tackle. Watch how he puts this on number 44 right here. He puts a move to the outside, cuts up the inside, and on this kind of turf, he's lucky he didn't lose his balance on it, but he really made a good run. That this puts him in a great situation. A second and short yards, they can run or throw. Bruce Taylor, number 44. I think a little surprised Middleton was able to cut <laughs> on that uh, greasy turf. I was too. Second, about three to go. Marty Smith breaks one tackle and gets out to the 30, close to the first down. It was Willie Harper, number 59, the right side linebacker, putting the stop on him, and they do have the first down yardage. Marty Smith, who came into the game with 521 yards rushing. You know, Barty Smith isn't the most exciting runner in the world, but he's the kind of a guy that is consistent. He keeps hanging in there. He'll get that yardage for you. He's a big back, and he's also a great receiver coming out of the backfield for him. He's got 32 catches, and he's up there among the leaders in the National Conference. In motion goes Ollie Smith, number 89. First time we've seen that today. Whitehurst going to him, but a bad pass, overthrown. Whitehurst seemed to rush it a little bit and also uh, had a little trouble getting a good grip on it snap from the center there Whitehurst was pulling out a little early on the thing and I think that uh, he didn't have quite control of the football when he set up to throw it and he rushed it so it is second and ten Green Bay the ball at their own 30 yard line it is nine to seven with 728 remaining in the first half the Packers lead it Ray Wershing uh, slipping on a field goal attempt from the 29 for San Francisco would have put them in front 
Barty Smith is Barty Smith taken down by Elia after a gain of about two good defensive play. Elia and Willie Harper. He got maybe two on the play. It'll be third down. Well, he got maybe three. Let's call There's it There's my linebacker, Mr. Carter. He's a rah-rah guy out there, too. I'll tell you, before the game and warm-ups out on the field, he was yelling and screaming, everybody getting fired up for this game. Well, Bart Starr has been trying to assemble a team with character, guys that really want to play, and uh, he's being patient with them. They've won only three times, but they think they're on the road back here in Green Bay area. Third down, seven to go. Whitehurst, complete to Ollie Smith, wide open. Eddie Lewis, number 22 on the coverage. Lewis playing the corner for the injured Tony Leonard, who's gone with a kidney injury suffered on Monday night against Dallas. Lewis, a second-year man from Kansas. There's a cheerleader. <laughs> I'll tell you, they've got a fan club up in Green Bay for him. They carried him off about two, three weeks ago. Must have, they taken, beat about, Detroit. Must have taken about 50 guys <laughs> to carry him off. He's got a great name, Mr. Roller, and he is built like that, too. He is, he's a fire plug out there. He loves to play. You can see that. You know, he's, he's smiling. He's having fun out here today. Green Bay leading helps him uh, feel that way a little <laughs> yeah. bit, too. First down, the pack. Wide left is Ollie Smith. Whitehurst, screen pass, Smith. Good block on Vanderbunt. And Smith has another first down to the 36-yard line of San Francisco. Willie Harper finally got him, and he had to come from the right side linebacker spot. I'll tell you, block here. Watch number 71, Mel Jackson, come out here for the block. Watch him. Well, you can't see it up in the right-hand corner, but he lays him right out. Skip Vanderbunt. 15-yard gain and a first down. And to contain this defense in front four is a job. And he, they've done it right here. There you see Hardman, Elam, and Jimmy Webb. Those are three of the best. First down, Green Bay. Erdell Middleton trying to get wide. Can't do a good hit on him. That was number 26, Stan Black, who's starting in the safety spot for the injured Ralph McGill. He's a rookie from Mississippi State, and uh, Bart Starr probably a little disappointed that uh, Middleton couldn't quite make the turn. But again, that's the greasiest part of the field. It sure is. Mr. Star Star looking good out there, isn't he? Got that nice leather jacket on, keeping warm. I don't know how he's keeping warm. It is 35 degrees out there. These two quarterbacks throwing the ball well. Plunk at 9 for 13, 106. And as you can see, David Whitehurst, a nifty 6 for 8, 104. we got five minutes left in the half. Intended for, oh, no, he can't hold on. Oldham nearly made a great catch. Just as he made his cut, Tommy, he slipped, lost his balance, somehow got his hands on the ball, but couldn't quite squeeze it. I'll tell you, this Whitehurst doesn't look like a rookie out there today. You know, I've watched in the last three weeks, and he's throwing the ball better today than he has in the last two weeks, I can guarantee you. And he's setting up well. He's getting himself under control. He's finding that receiver and laying the ball up there perfect. That was another good throw. Odom just slipped before he caught it. Third L. Middleton goes out. Eric Torkelson, number 26, comes in. It is third and 11 for Green Bay. They are in San Francisco territory at the 37. Slot formation right. We have McGeorge in tight end, split wide left. Elam on the rush, complete up the middle to Torkelson out of the backfield, short of the first down. Good coverage by Stan Black and Willie Harper. And so the Packers will be well short. It'll be fourth down and about five yards to go. So uh, they will have to kick that ball, and it's going to be David Beverly coming in to punt. He'll be aiming for that coffin corner, as they call it, trying to get it inside that 10. Anything inside a 10 is considered an excellent kick. 4.43 remaining first half. Tim Ryan and Tom Maddy, we've had a very entertaining football game so far. 9-7, to seven, the Green Bay Packers lead it. Beverly from the 41-yard line, good rush on him. And it goes out at the, let's see where they're going to mark that, about the 14-yard line. So. Not a great punch by Beverly, but he had a good rush on him. He had Dave Williams, number 30, in uh, right on top of him with 4.26 remaining in the first half. Green Bay continues to lead it, 9-7. to seven. Radio Shack has a great Space Age gift for kids at a down-to-earth price. The original Space Patrol walkie-talkie. Just $14.95 a pair, and they really work. Crystal-controlled and battery-operated, just like Dad's portable CV. And they're built in Radio Shack's own electronics factory. 
So June this Christmas, July. thrill your kids with the fourteen ninety five a pair Space Patrol. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. Last hand. Eight hours and ten minutes. Fantastic. Finally, we come to the Nine hours and here. twelve minutes. Amazing. Vic Sinex Long Acting Nasal Spray is amazing. It can quickly have you breathing as easily as someone with no congestion problem. And then it decongests up to ten hours. Ten hours? Incredible. The opera? No, my nasal spray. Vic Sinex Long Acting. Incredible. If you are Emily Hughes, then I'm your daughter. Damn you for doing this to us. Arthur Hill and Barbara Barry in Tell Me My Name, Tuesday at 9.30, 8.30 Central in Mountain Time. Well, the playoff formula may be confusing, but it sure has brought a lot of excitement to the final weekend of NFL play. Look at this. The Giants at home to Chicago. They're tied 3-3 in the third. The Bears have got to win to make the playoffs. Peyton has 11 carries for 11 yards. That's it. All right, the 49ers with a first down. Wilbur Jackson, number 40. The ball carrier got maybe two on the play. And here's a big one, too. Houston in front of Cincinnati. The Bengals have to win in order to make the playoffs. If they win, they will win the Central Division of the AFC. That's it. Mr. Pastorini down there having another good day. Is he and Billy White shoot? Watson. That is a tough team, Houston. They are a very good football club. Well, that's what the boys have to contend with out here today. Just trying to keep the mud off the cleats, keep the feet moving. Second, and about eight to go. Jackson and Delvin Williams are the running back. This is Williams trying the wide left side. Gets one good block, slices through, and trying to get the first down. Looks to me like he's a little short. It'll be third and about three to go after a gain of six on the play. Well, they're going to give him a little more than I thought. Let's see where they mark it. It is short of first down yardage, that much we know. Let's call it third and a yard. You know, they use a special cleat on a day like today. Tim, that we used to use. She's called a mud cleat, which is about a half inch longer than the regular cleat. That helps you get down on the ground a little bit more to give you a little more stability. Well, we've had some slipping and sliding <laughs> primarily in the midfield area. Third down. And everybody moving all over the place. We had Harrison in motion. And Keith Bonhorst, the right offensive tackle, appeared to be the first man to move. Let's see what our referee, Fred Wyatt, has to say. It is illegal procedure against the 49ers. So that makes their third down situation a little more difficult. False start, number 71, all fans. Third down. Keith Fonhorst was the man. And so it is third, about seven, six and a half. And they are six out of eight, as we said, in converting these today. In the slot comes Gene Washington, wide right. It's Kenny Harrison, number 83. They pretty much have to throw here. Williams moves up to the wing. Everybody's out in the pattern. Sideliner picked up by Buchanan. Look out, look Buchanan out. Buchanan will score. Touchdown, Green Bay. Touchdown, Green Bay. Oh. And the Packers lengthen their lead. Tom, you got to wonder a little bit about that call. We had all the receivers in the pattern throwing in the flat deep in his own end. And it's a long throw. Here's Plunkett set it up. And you can see the ball is really thrown high. Gives the defensive back plenty of time to come up, and he, he can walk in that end zone. Makes a great interception right Here comes uh, oh. Mike McCoy to make sure he gets in there unmolested. <laughs> He's going to help him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So the Packers with their second interception, this time they take it right in for the score, 29 yards. Willie Buchanan. I tell you, Plunkett just didn't have the zip on the ball there. When you throw that sideline pattern, you can't arc it out. Well, I got to question that call anyway. Right, I was yeah. very surprised to see him take both the backs out. He set Williams up on the wing, and then he had had uh, Jackson coming out in the pattern. And anytime you throw sideline that deep in your own end, you're, you're buying a little problem anyway. And he had... Nobody to block, had to release the ball real quick. I'm a little bit surprised. So the Packers take advantage of the interception for a big six, and Chester Marco will kick the point after when we return in a moment. Why did he not kick it while we were... Oh, it's a long delay out there. 
Okay, Green Bay, Buchanan. Oh, yes, we did, but we're still here, evidently, and uh, Green Bay uh, has a 15 to nothing lead, and they had to get another man on the field in order to kick that uh, extra point. Chester Marco is now ready to go. David Beverly will hold. I would say he better hit this one. <laughs> hit the post last time up. <laughs> and there's movement there by the 49ers. Whether they were drawn or not remains to be seen. Referee Fred Wyant will let us know. It's against the Packers, so somebody got the hand up there a little quickly. Greg. Chester Marco will get a little more practice. He's been <laughs> kicking the ball a lot today, Tommy. He sure has. Ball start, number 68. Number 68, Greg Cook, rookie offensive tackle. Mark Cole from the 15 this time, and that's good. So the Green Bay Packers on the converted touchdown move into a 16-7 lead over the San Francisco 49ers, 2.53 remaining first half. Uh, he caught me doing a not-so-great job wrapping a great Christmas gift. A Kodak Tele Instamatic 608 camera. It's almost like giving two cameras, because it has two lenses. Okay, Star, do your stuff. Look how the telephoto lens can make the best part of your picture bigger. A Kodak Tele 608 camera doesn't cost a great deal of money. But it gives a great deal of pleasure. And like all Kodak gifts, the Tele 608 camera says, open me first to save Christmas in pictures. If you owned a Weller soldering gun kit like this, you'd find it easy to do lots of things around the house. Like patch a planter, fix a frame, customize a car, solder a signal, sculpt a statue, touch up a Tiffany, set up a CB. Get yourself a Weller soldering gun kit. See how easy soldering can be. Weller, one of the fine family of tools from Cooper Industries. You know, Mr. Marco scored 50 points this season. Ain't too bad. They haven't had much offense generated at all, but at least he's got 50 of them. Well, there's the story on the board of the last touchdown. Willie Buchanan's 29-yard interception for the score. Paul Hofer is the deep man for San Francisco. Marco will kick it off, and the pack leads it 16-7 to here. Time winding down on the first half. Hofer standing right on the goal line. A low kick, bouncing, and out of bounds. So Marco will have to do it all over again. How are we doing here at Tampa and St. Louis? What how does it stand? I can't see that one. Let's see. There's a 17 to 7. Tampa Bay is really coming after. They had a 27-yard field goal. And it's in the third period with 4.17 left. How about that? There it is right there, 17-7. This is really an upset because, to me, St. Louis was one of the greatest offensive threats with Hart and Metcalf and uh, Mel Gray out there. They really had some offense, but they sure have fallen apart. Metcalf hurt in this game today and will not return. So they've lost a little offensive punch, and they're going to need it to come back against that tough Tampa Bay defense. One thing about those Buccaneers, uh, they lost and lost and lost and lost. They were very seldom embarrassed. They played everybody <laughs> tough defensively all season long. Well, they held Mr. Payton down there to about 106 yards a couple of weeks ago. If you can hold him him down. I'll tell you one thing. They have a good defensive ball club. Marco will have to do it again as we look at Paul Hofer who's now moved up to the five yard line. Marco will be hitting it from his own 30. 16 to 7 here in Milwaukee. The Packers leading the 49ers. Packers 3 and 10. The 49ers 5 and 8. They both want to improve on that. Momentarily juggled. You know, there's, there's something that happened right there that shouldn't happen. When you have your special teams, and this is one of the, the downfalls that San Francisco's had this year, is their special teams have been really not very good at all. They I don't know if they, they work on them, but they just have not done a good job, and one of the things that they need improvement is on that. That deep man should catch that ball. The other guy to the outside is should come on up and just... Uh, that was Bobby yeah. Farrell who caught it. Right. And Hofer was the deep man who was over there trying to get to it. 12-yard return, first down, 49ers. 
at their own 27-yard line. Jackson and Delvin Williams, the running back. For Harrison, oh. and he drops another one. Kenny Harrison, that ball was right on the money from Plunkett at the 45-yard line with Buchanan on the coverage, but Harrison couldn't hold on. That's two of them today. Yes, dropped. it is. I'll tell you, Plunkett drilled that ball in there. There was no arc on it. He laid that ball right up there, and it was a good throw. Second you know, I'd, down. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to be a little upset about it. He's coming out of the ball game right here. Wide right. From number 81, Willie McGee, in at wide receiver. Plunkett to throw, swings it out for Jackson. Hit immediately. Good coverage by Steve Luke, the safety, who had that one figured all the way, and there's no gain on the play. Number 46, Steve Luke. He's having a fine afternoon. Well, they've gone another quarter without a touchdown being <laughs> scored in that Chicago Giants game. The Giants, as we said, a good, tough defensive team. The Bears, uh, they got to have it somehow, they, some well, way. They, they, they're controlling their own destiny. Now, if they lose that game, it's their, you know, it's their own fault because I'd really like to see Chicago in there. You know, Jim Fink's the general manager. I think one of the great guys in football, and they've got a good young coach up there in Jack Pardee. Uh, I'd like to see this ball club represent. They've done an outstanding job in Chicago since Fink's took over and uh, could well be in the playoffs. We've got a, a timeout on the field here at the... 221 still to play. Must have been an injury timeout. It is third down. Uh oh. Giants are coming back. See, I start rooting for Chicago. What happens? The Giants come right here and beat them. Get another field goal. Get a 19 yard field goal with 11.39 left in that fourth quarter. So they're up 6 to 3. You know, the conditions in New York are, are really bad right now. They've got a sleeting rain. The field is in, in, in bad condition, so I'd imagine they're going to have their problems with footing and throwing and holding on that football. Green Bay took a timeout on that play, and uh, now we're set to go with third and 11 San Francisco. You know, that, that statistic right there that we saw there, six for nine on the conversion on the third down, that's pretty high. Jackson Williams. Running backs and wide open Paul Seal. Seal has a first down for the 49ers out near the 50 yard line. Luke, the man to hit him, and that's a bit of a physical mismatch. Paul <laughs> Seal, 6'4, 223. Luke is 6'3, uh, 200, and I would think he's probably a little under that by now. Right, you, this is a zone defense, and he just picks right in between the slots right in there and comes up, dumps that ball over the top. Seal picks it off, gets the first down, a 19 yard reception. We've reached the two-minute warning here at County Stadium in Milwaukee, and the Green Bay Packers continue to lead the 49ers 16 to 7. Christmas is a time for closeness, and closeness is what Norelco razors are all about. The rotary razors with 36 blades. They come in cord and rechargeable models. They're the razors that cured the gotchas. And the ladybugs, the ladies' razors that really work. And the Ladybug Salon, a ladybug razor plus 11 grooming attachments. Norelco, even our name says Merry Christmas. Attention shoppers, the new Atari cartridge game is in. Excuse me. Uh-oh, George again. Atari's Air Sea Battle. It comes with 27 games, but that's just for starters. You can get nine cartridges, 187 Ooh, games. Blackjack. <laughs> oh! I'd like an Atari. Sorry. Only our demonstrators left. Mine! No, George. Mine. The new video computer system by Atari. <laughs> more games, more fun. This final day is a big one of the National Football League, and at halftime, you'll be brought right up to date by Phyllis Brent Nerve. Scores and highlights from around the NFL. Stay with us through the rest of this game. It's been an entertaining tilt so far. First down, 49ers. The ball at their own 47-yard line. Plunkett, who's been gunning today, has it up again. Complete to Gene Washington, hit by McCoy and Johnny Gray, and hit hard. And he gets up and says, I'm okay. Let's try it again. I tell you, he's a tough kid. 
Here's an isolated camera on him right here. You can look up, see him looking at the snap of the ball. He's coming down. He's just going to do a square off pattern to the inside. Uses those short, choppy steps, as we say, and you can see those defensive backs come up and really nail him. Dave Roller came right at, right through the line of scrimmage and flattened Jim Plunkett before he even got the ball. And whether he was drawn offside, or Plunkett says, hey, Dave, you don't have to be that nasty. I mean, I didn't even have the ball in my hand. <laughs> That's where you get in real trouble, let me tell you. And they're going to call it offside against the Packers. Whether we can see that one again or not, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll ask our video disc operator, and if we can get it up, we will. Offside, number 74, defense, first down. I, I, I'd call him offside just a little bit. <laughs> he wanted the handoff, I think, is what he did. wants to carry the ball for anybody, even the opposition. <laughs> I don't know how he slipped in between two of me. You know, he got that little chunky body there. First and five for the 49ers. That's the easiest five yards they'll get all day. <laughs> Bucket deep for McGee, overthrown, and oh, what a catch! Oh, oh, he couldn't hold on. Boy. Billy Buchanan made a great effort to grab that one in the end zone, but when he hit the ground, he dropped the ball. Oh. Diving attempt by Buchanan. That is a great, great try. You know, I, I wonder about whether McGee had the, the right pattern on. He seemed a little uncertain when he got to the goal line, and Bucket was going right for that corner. So whether it was overthrown or whether it was McGee running the pattern uh, incorrectly, we'll not be known till after the game is over. Ken Meyer has his opinion right now. <laughs> uh, you know, McGee hasn't been used that much this year. He's only caught two balls to date. Willie McGee had a broken leg, missed all of last season, and uh, they've been kind of bringing him back slowly. He wasn't really ready to go until mid-season this year. Draw play, Wilbur Jackson. Look, Look at him go! Jackson's gonna score, touchdown! Wilbur Jackson, with a minute 20 on the clock, brings it in from the 33-yard line, and the 49ers are That's right back in it. Plunkett calls a great play right here. Just opens the door. Jackson steps right up there, and he just outruns him here. You can see him put on the speed, jumps in that end zone with both feet. That was a great call, and, you know, I criticized the, the last call of his. i got to sure give him marks for that one <laughs> because they were, uh, Packers were obviously thinking pass. A real good drop play call, and the 49ers... Ray Worshing puts it through, and the point after is good. And so we're back to a two-point differential with 120 remaining here in this first half. The Green Bay Packers lead it 16 to 14. I'll tell you, that one point, that extra point could be a big factor in this game now again. Wilbur Jackson for the score, six plays, 71 yards. And remember, next Saturday here on CBS at 4.30 Eastern time, the World Professional Skateboard Speed Championships. And they've got an interesting event in this one that I'm kind of looking forward to. They have what they call skate cars now, and the kids lie down on these things, and they're surrounded by fiberglass. They look kind of like a miniature rocket car, and they can go up to about 50 miles an hour going downhill. <laughs> they do have brakes on them, I'm happy to report. Oh, is that right? <laughs> but they steer them just by shifting them as you normally would standing up on a skateboard if you were a skateboarder, which I'm not. I bought my one, my son's birthday was yesterday, Tim, and I bought him a skateboard. Well, get him a headgear. I'll tell okay. you, he's, he's got that. He's got that from hockey. All which right, the European familiar. Figure Skating Championships, if you missed it last year from Helsinki, <laughs> we're bringing it back by popular demand. That's I also on the sports spec. I didn't miss it. All Did right, you? from the kickoff, the Packers. Number 37, Tim Moresco, brings it up the sideline, a short kickoff, and he got it up over the 35. See where they mark it. It looks about close to the 38, 39-yard line. A good field position for the pack with 1.16 remaining here in the first half. Uh, there's a man that's awful happy to get those seven, six points at the end of the season here, Mr. Jackson. He's having a good day, a good rushing. These two guys are two great backs, Jackson and Williams. First down, Green Bay. Set the tight end on the wing. Markelson and Smith, the running backs. Whiters will throw complete to Odom. Steve Odom has a first down. Inside the 45-yard line of the 49ers. They got the hurry-up offense going right now, lining up on the ball. They've got two timeouts left. Got over just under a minute to go. They can get down here in field goal range. First down. Whitehurst, complete good catch. Eric Markelson fumble. Smith diving forward. Who's got it? 
Green Bay. Green Bay, Marty Smith recovered the fumble. Torkelson made a real good catch in traffic, but then lost the ball as he was tackled. But Marty Smith very alertly recovered. And they call a timeout, Tim. Stop that clock. Here you get a chance to see the rush by San Francisco, that big front four. He's got some time. The offensive line's doing a good job. Whitehurst drops it over to Torkelson. He makes a great catch here. The ball is stripped out. Barty Smith very alertly picks that ball up. He needed that one. And there's the master himself right there, Mr. Bart Starr. We've had ourselves some action in this football say, game. It's not bad. Up. Last game of the season, what do you think? I'm not kidding there. Those guys look like they're enjoying it out there. And I think one thing that's contributed to it is that it's not as cold in Milwaukee as it normally would be <laughs> right. this time of year. I know these 49ers, they get to train in that beautiful Bay Area weather and they uh, practice there. But when they come into the East, they don't want to be here in December. And uh, they had to feel pretty good when they got up this morning and found that it was uh, really more like uh, an early fall day for Milwaukee. And uh, the low of uh, 35, we may be somewhere down to uh, about 35 degrees now it was 40 at the kickoff so the Packers have used up their timeouts and they're going to have to uh, do something in 40 seconds here without having another opportunity to uh, stop the clock with a timeout I think if they get another 10 yards here they you know throw that quick out pattern stop the clock and go for the field goal Tim that's what they're going to have to go for look for the look for those sideline patterns so that they can get these guys out to the outside and get that stop the clock stop First down, Green Bay. Lots of time for Whitehurst for McGeorge overthrown out of bounds. Mel Phillips and Skip Vanderbunt on the coverage to Rich McGeorge. Got a finger on it, but uh, that was all. Pass a little overthrown. Number 81, the tight end, Rich McGeorge, eight year man from Elon College in North Carolina. He's second in, in receiving to the tight end. Second down, we've got 35 seconds remaining. There's Chester who's uh, kept that leg busy today and he may have another opportunity to get some exercise. Slot formation, now they send Odom the other way and they've got McGeorge on the wing with Odom now wide right. Ollie Smith wide left. Whitehurst has time, swings it to Smith, hit immediately by Vanderbunt, breaks the tackle. Get out! And do it. Uh, McGeorge or rather, uh, Barty Smith could not get out of bounds. 22 seconds left. You know the 49ers aren't going to hustle back. Good effort by Smith. Broke one tackle. 15 seconds. And the officials called time to get everybody organized. Barty Smith is hurt on the play. He really is. He's, he's down. He's just throwing that ball away. Oh, there's a penalty flag down, too. Flag is down eight seconds left as Whitehurst just threw it out of bounds intended in the general direction of Odom to oh. get that clock stopped. That and hurt. It's against the Packers. So that will bring on the punting unit because they are not close enough for a Chester Marcole field goal try. And so the 49ers put the stop on the pack here in these closing seconds. No, it will be, Marcole. Beverly is going to hold. See what the penalty is. False start, number 68, offense, third down. Oh, all right, so that's not so bad. They're at the 35. That makes it a 45-yard try for Chester Marco. They might as well take a swing at it. Eight seconds on the clock. He can slip. He's right in a very wet spot out there in the field. It's really muddy. He gets his foot into it. No oh, good. It's wide left. Marco is wide left. So he and Worshing have each missed field goal tries here. And we've got three seconds showing on the clock. And uh, the San Francisco 49ers managed to stop the Packers' final thrust in this first half. The Pack continues to lead it 16 to 14. Very closely contested game. With three seconds to go, the 49ers will have first down. Get Ball one. at their own 27-yard <laughs> line. This would they call throw it up for grabs and run. Chester Markle has kicked 13 of 19 this season. And he missed from 45 yards. Delvin Williams. Dave Roller on the tackle will complete the half. And that's it at the end of the first half of play. The San Francisco 49ers trailing the home team Green Bay Packers by a score of 
16 to 14. 